Here are the takeaways of our 2015 CRS Breast Cancer Symposium. First, Dr. Wendy Chen from Dana Farber Cancer Institute spoke about early breast cancer detection and prevention at our breast cancer symposium. A person with high breast density breasts have higher chance to get breast cancer than those people with low breast density. Women who are overweight after menopause have a higher risk of breast cancer. Breast cancer risk decreases with physical activity. Any type of activity. You don't have to run a marathon. About 90% of people who have breast cancer do not carry the BRCA1 and BRCA2 gene mutation. For more details, we encourage you to watch Dr. Chen's talk on our channel. Now, Dr. Irene Cooter from Mass General Hospital gave insights about breast cancer treatments at our symposium. Have you ever heard of EBCTCG? This means Early Breast Cancer Trialists Collaborative Group. All breast cancers can be divided into three groups. About 75% includes estrogen receptor positive breast cancer and their therapy is anti-estrogen therapy. About 25% of all breast cancers are estrogen receptor negative breast cancer and their therapy method is chemotherapy. And about 20% of all breast cancers are HER2 receptor overexpressing breast cancers and the therapy is chemotherapy plus HER2 targeted therapy. For anti-estrogen therapies, aromatase inhibitors are now recommended over tamoxifen. However, their side effects include promoting bone loss, and more likely to cause musculoskeletal aches and pains. Herceptin is a humanized anti-HER2 antibody. Herceptin is also called trastuzumab. Hormone receptor positive, HER2 positive, and triple negative breast cancers are the three clinical breast cancer subsets. For more details about this topic, we encourage you to watch Dr. Kuta's talk. The talk of Dr. Rachel Friedman from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute covered current clinical trials for breast cancer. As we learned before, traditional clinical breast cancer subsets are divided in three groups. Hormone receptor positive, about 65-75% to 75 of all breast cancers. HER2 receptor positive breast cancers are about 15-20% to 20 of all breast cancers. And triple negative breast cancers are about 15% of all breast cancers. Here you see the timeline of treatment approvals in HER2 positive disease. Here you can see the timeline of treatment approvals in HER2 receptor positive breast cancer from 1985 until 2013. In 2013, you can see TDM1 trastuzumab was approved by FDA for metastatic disease. At HER2 positive breast cancers, Herceptin is binding at the outside of the HER2 receptor. Lapatinib is binding to the inside of the receptor. Hertuzumab inhibits her receptor interactions, prevents activation of cell growth, synergizes with trastuzumab. Triple negative breast cancer, TNBC, is defined as negative for estrogen, progesterone, and HER2 receptors. Triple negative breast cancer, TNBC, represents about 15 to 20 percent of all breast cancers, as we learned before. Although endocrine and HER2 directed therapy is not used, chemotherapy works the best against triple negative breast cancer. Large number of targeted agents in clinical trials for triple negative breast cancer are often paired with chemotherapy. How can we make progress? Participate in trials. Clinical trials exist for patients at any step of their breast cancer journey. Trials are a part of the continuum of care. There are benefits to being on a trial. A larger treatment team, possible exposure to cutting-edge new medications, helping other patients with breast cancer. None of the advances in breast cancer could have happened without patients volunteering to be in trials.
What are clinical trial phases? Clinical trials are conducted in series of steps. Each phase is designed to answer a separate research question. Phase 1, testing a new treatment in a small group of people to evaluate safety, dose, and side effects. Phase 2, evaluating the effectiveness and safety of a new treatment in a larger group. Phase 3, evaluating whether a new treatment works better than standard therapy in a large group. You can leave a clinical trial at any time. There should be no upcharge for being in a clinical trial. Each clinical trial is different and has a different schedule. In almost every trial with placebo, at minimum, a patient received best standard of care. For more details on this topic, we encourage you to watch Dr. Friedman's talk. For more information on clinical trials, please visit our website www.cancerresearchsimplified.org and download our journal, the Journal of Simplified Cancer Research, issues September, October, and November 2014. And there you will find more details, all aspects about clinical trials. Ms. Carol Sullivan from Mass General Cancer Center talked all about nutrition and exercise for cancer prevention and after survival. Drinking water is an important part of healthy diet. Increase the amount of fruits, vegetables, beans, legumes, nuts, seeds, herbs every day. Hydration is important for nutrition to be distributed in the body and for diet containing high fiber food. Here you see a healthy eating plate. Use healthy oils like olive and canola oil for cooking on salad and at the table. Limit butter. Avoid trans fat. The more veggies and the greater the variety, the better. Potatoes and french fries don't count. Eat plenty of fruits of all colors. Drink water, tea or coffee with little or no sugar. Limit milk, dairy, one to two servings per day and juice, one small glass per day. Avoid sugary drinks. Eat a variety of whole grains like whole wheat bread, whole grain pasta and brown rice. Limit refined grains like white rice and white bread. Choose fish, poultry and nuts. Limit red meat and cheese. Avoid bacon, cold cuts and other processed meats. Stay active. Know the fats in foods. Make them work for you. Benefits of fats. 1. It helps with weight maintenance. 2. Certain types are anti-inflammatory. Excess fat intake has been associated with cancer recurrence. Low-fat diet, 33 gram per day, led to a 24% reduction of breast cancer recurrence compared to a higher-fat diet, 51 gram per day. Reduce the amount of saturated fat. Saturated fat is solid in room temperature. Saturated fat found in cheese, red meat and whole milk, solid shortenings, butter fat containing products, tropical oils such as palm oil, coconut oil, cacao butter. Intake of animal fat, mainly from red meat and high fat dairy foods during menopausal years, is associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. Omega-3 fats, however, may be toxic to cancer cells and protect normal cells. They may reduce tumor growth and spreading. They may enhance chemotherapy effects. Omega-3 fats can be found in fatty fish salmon, sardines, tuna, plant sources flaxseed, walnuts, whole soy foods, tofu, soybeans, and soy milk. To achieve a healthy body weight, you need to be realistic with yourself about extra weight, set goals, and plan. Talk about it with your friends and family. Get help, sleep well, drink more water, and reduce stress. Be physically active. For weight loss, research supports 300 minutes per week, 60 minutes, 5 days per week. Now get started. Start tomorrow. Make half of your lunch and dinner plate vegetables and eat them first. Buy a pedometer. Make a grocery list. Talk about these information you just learned. For more details on this topic, we encourage you to watch Ms. Sullivan's talk.
So we hope this was helpful to you. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more cancer videos. And once you subscribe, don't forget to hit the bell so that you can be informed when we publish our new video. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next episode. Take care.